how to do mathematics? Yeah, this is a great question, and I love talking about this because I think a lot of people don't know how to do mathematics. And it's a great thing to actually figure out, especially early on in a course, especially in your calculus class. You know, people think, well, gee, the way I'll study for mathematics is um, I'll take really careful notes, I'll really listen to the professor. If there's a teacher assistant, I'll go to all the TA sessions and write everything down, and then I'll do all the homework. And afterwards, when I'm preparing for the exam, I'll look through my notes, read them very carefully, maybe make an outline up, take a real careful look at the notes, look over my old homework, see where I made my mistakes, and therefore I'll be really prepared. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not the way to do mathematics. The way to do mathematics is to just that. Do mathematics. Reading over notes, looking at old problems, blah, 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 blah. Math is not a spectator sport. You really should think about mathematics as like playing, playing, playing some sort of game. Suppose you want to, to learn how to play tennis. Okay. There's a number of ways you can learn how to play tennis. Here is one approach. What you can do is get about 15 hours of John McEnroe playing tennis. You know, amazing tennis player. And you video, have videotapes of him in very, various matches playing various games and whatnot. And you sit down earnestly in your room, and you, know, you have some chips and stuff, but you really concentrate on what you're doing, and you watch these 15 hours of video, and really intensely, I mean, not just goofing off, you really are watching because you want to learn how to play tennis. After those 15 hours, you come out and you say, okay, well now I know how to play, I've watched this expert, he makes it look so easy. Then you get out onto the court, you don't even know how to hold a tennis racket. See, this is exactly what mathematics is like. If you want to learn how to play tennis, what you've got to do is you've got to play tennis. You've got to learn how to hold the racket. You've got to learn how to throw up the ball. You've got to learn how to hit. You've got to learn your backhand. You've got to learn how to run around. You've got to learn how to read the opponent. This is what mathematics is. You've got to do it. Reading about it, hearing someone else talk about it, even me, as wonderful as I am, it's not going to do it for you. You have got to do it. And the way you do it is by actively trying examples and problems and working through things. And that's the way you're going to know if you really have conquered the subject. So what you've got to do, if you want to do mathematics, is literally just that. Do it. So when there are homework assignments, of course you do those. You go to the lectures, you learn about the ideas, you try to make it your own. But then after all that, when it's time to prepare for an exam or for a quiz or just to see if you're on the ball on things, you must do problems. Do lots of examples. Work them out. And if you run out of examples, you know what you do? You go to either here where we have some examples, and when you use those, go to the library and check out another calculus book. There's tons of them there, and they're big and fat, and they got thousands of problems in there. The answers are in the back of the book. You can check the answers, but be careful. Many, many, many times, the answers in the back of the book are wrong. You know, they hire some people to find the answers in the back of the book, and those people are great, but you know, mistakes are made. And in fact, um, when they print them up, there are typographical errors and whatnot. And I have seen so many calculus students come into my office and say, Professor Berger, I tried to work number 17 down. I got this answer, and the back of the book says this. And I look at their work. It's absolutely perfect. They did the problem perfectly correct. Turns out there was a typo in the back of the book on number 17. Well, the back of the book is, is, should not be treated as a, as a sort of a you know, shroud of Turin or something, or some sort of you know, religious or philosophical significance. It's the back of the book, OK? Not a big deal. Ideally, I would love it. I sincerely would love it if you would come to a point where you are so confident in what you're doing and feel so secure in the mathematics that you are producing that you produce an answer, you look in the back of the book and just very casually and confidently state, the book is wrong. That is a great thing to shoot for, in fact, if you can do that. Anyway, the point is to do a lot of examples and get feedback and look at it. When preparing for a test, by the way, that's exactly what you should be doing. Looking over notes is reasonably important to get a sense of where things are. Maybe you forgot exactly the details of the chain rule. Um, looking back here, we talk about that kind of thing. But really, at the end of the day, what you've got to be doing is working through a lot of examples and working them through on your own. And don't redo old problems too much. I mean, you want to do a little bit of that, it's fine. But the truth really is that on the test, no one's going to ask you to do a problem you've already done. That's extremely rare. In fact, the problems will be new and fresh. The more you do, the more variety you see, the better prepared you are to, ca to tackle those, those basic issues. So bottom line, do math, do math. <laughs> OK, now back to math. <laughs> see you there.